فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم علي باب حافظ بن حجر what he did was he tried to explain this because there's a little issue here at hand which is حجاج 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 بن يوسف الثقفي was before عمر بن عبد العزيز and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz came after Hajjaj. And was the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz good? Yes. The people were living a very good life. They, they enjoyed themselves. Because Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was a taqi, a righteous person, a man who truly was a just leader. He was an imam adil. So the scholars, they said, how is this possible that this hadith is clearly, is clearly saying How do you reconcile between that and what happened here? Ibn Hajar brings so many interpretations and explanations and then finally he says the one that befits is most befitting to interpret it and to explain it with is a statement that he narrates from he says أخرجه يعقوب ابن شيبة يعقوب ابن شيبة brings it من طريق الحارث that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said Yazid ibn Wahb narrates it from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said لا يأتي عليكم يوم إلا وهو شر من اليوم الذي كان قبله حتى تقوم الساعة it means what Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says لست أعني رخاء بلا العيش يصيبه ولا مالا يفيده Abdullah ibn Mas'ud says that I don't mean by this when I say this to you لا يأتي عليكم يوم that a day will not come or a time will not come except the time after it is worse I don't mean by this by what رخاء بلا العيش that you're going to have a good blossom bliss life no وَلَا مَالًا يُفِيدُ And that you're going to gain wealth. No, no. ولكن, but what this hadith means is لَا يَأْتِي عَلَيْكُمْ يَوْمٌ That there does not come a time except that the scholars and the people of knowledge become less in number. Hajjaj's time was in terms of worldly angle, it was what? It was worse. In terms of رَخَاءً مِنَ العيش. And mal, he didn't have rakha min al aish. And he didn't, the people weren't having wealth, enough li lifestyles to live in. Are you with me, brothers? But Hajjaj time, the Sahabas that lived, the scholars that lived were more in number than the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's time, the Sahabas died, more died, and the people of knowledge passed away. Are you with me, brothers? إلا وهو أقل علم من الذي مضى قبله فإذا ذهب العلماء when the scholars go Ibn Hajar say استوى الناس the people become leveled this is an issue you have to realize when the scholars die because the scholars are the ones who are ahead of everyone else everyone else has to what? has to listen to the scholars because Allah commands them in the Quran وإذا جاءهم أمر من الأمن أو الخوف أذاعوا به وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِبَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ If only they brought it back to the scholars, the people of knowledge now. So, when the scholars die, what happens? Those people become what? Leveled. And that's exactly the reality. Pay attention. I remember, subhanAllah, you know, the time, you know, uh, I, I mean, I didn't, wasn't old enough to remember this, but I, I, from the works and the books that I saw, if you look at the time Abd Aziz ibn Baz was alive, Al Imam Abd Aziz ibn Baz, and Al Imam Muhammad Nasir al-Din al Albani, and also Al Imam Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin, when they three were alive, the unity of Ahl al Salafiyyin was so strong. And it was very, it was in place. It was very powerful. And I remember, subhanAllah, having to look at and ponder on. That when they differed amongst themselves in the uh, issue of the American troops, whether they should come into the Muslim, uh, in, whether they should come into the Arabian Peninsula, Jazeera al Arab, whether the Americans should be allowed, when they differed with uh, amongst themselves, and Sheikh Al Albani took the opinion that they shouldn't, 
and that it's incorrect for that to happen. Are you with me? And Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz took the opinion that it's permissible to repel the harm of the Ba'thi party of Saddam Hussein. When they differed amongst themselves, what happened? The Ghawgha, the ignorant ones, started to take the pulpits and started to benefit from this disunity. Really like they had their own personal agenda. That was really what they had. Are you with me, brothers? The Ghawgha started to speak. And they started to utter, مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانِ The reason being, there was some friction, there was some disagreement right now in that in the particular ruling. But even then, when they were alive, matters were always brought back to them. And because they were ulama of the sunnah, their fatwa revolved around the same sources. They revolved around the same sources. So anybody who tried to go to Sheikh Ibn Baz and try to get into Ibn Baz's mind by criticizing his brother, Muhammad Nasr al it will never get nowhere. He will be silenced and he will be told to be quiet. Rather, Ibn Baz would say, "Ma ra'aytu tahta adib al-sama." I never saw under the sky a rajul, a individual, a'lam bil hadith bil albani. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin was. They came to Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin and they started to whisper to him and say, "Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, albani is a murji, albani is a murji," and he responded harshly, and he said to them, "Either they don't know al-albani or they don't know irja." It's one of the two. They didn't accept that. As Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani was asked, who is the most knowledgeable people on the face of this earth that you've seen? And he mentions Muhammad Taqiyuddin al-Hilali, Muhammad al-Amin al-Shanqirti, rahimahullah, as Sheikh Ubaidullahi al-Dihlawi, rahimahullah, and Abd al-Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz. Knowing the respect and the honor and the knowledge of his brother Abd al-Aziz ibn Baz. Ala kulli hal, when the scholars were there, the matter was brought back to them. But when they died, Istawa and Nasu, the people became so close to each other in knowledge. Age-wise, knowledge-wise, it became that level of what? Istiwa equal. So what happens? And that is the reality. And when that happened, Istawa and Nasu, the people become equal. فَلَا يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ And we still, وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ وَالْمِنَّهُ Still, the truth of the matter is, is that still we have ulama amongst us. It's going to get worse. But we are not like we were when Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymin and Al-Bani was alive. No person who read the books and looked at the matter properly would say that it is. You could see things started to shift. And as time goes on, it's going to get worse. You know, we're looking at our ulama now, how old they are, how their beards have become white, and how they've become, you realize, that matters are becoming more worrying for a person who loves the sunnah and who loves the ulama who loves the ulama it worries him even more because when the people become equal and they become all the same فَلَا يُؤْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ people will not prohibit each other from evil وَلَا يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ the people will not call each other to good nor will they prevent each other from evil فَعِنَّ ذَلِكَ يُهْلَكُونَ and then destruction will come to them people will say to each other who are you to talk to me? be quiet, leave me alone uh, Ya akhi, why is Allah amur bin ma'roof and nahi alil munkar? Akhi, it's good. No, it's good. Because the people become the same. They don't take each other serious anymore. Allah amur bin ma'roof and nahi alil munkar goes out of the window. And what, what happens if a nation leaves Allah amur bin ma'roof and nahi alil munkar? Fayyuhu lakun. They become destroyed. So look at it, brothers. The dihabu al-ulama, the leaving on the dying and the passing away of the scholars brings about what? A vacuum. Space. For extremism to be bred. For you to propagate the idea of whilst the ulama are alive, bringing to us the extremism by opening that vacuum and saying to the people there is no ulama to refer back to, bring it back to us, is really trying to allow extremism to spread. Wallahi, that's what it is. You're letting extremism exp exp expand and go fast by what? Either by exaggeration or negligence. Because look, you were the ones who belittled the ulama in the eyes of the people. Now the extremists, if we say to him, Ibn Baz said this, what you're doing is wrong. I'll say to him, Ibn Baz is a scholar for dollar. You're the one who said this to him. You're the one who belittled Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymin and Al-Bari. 
and gave them no importance. You're the one who said to them that the scholars don't know our situation properly. You're the one who said to them they can't relate to us. They're Bedouins, they live in the livestock. You're the one who said this to them. So when we begin the fatawa of these ulama, the qima and the value of their statements has become low. So this is why it's important that this is understood. Then Ibn Hajjah rahimahullah in his kitab Fathul Bariyu, he goes on to say after a while, he says, وَمِن طَرِيقِ الشَّعْبِي عَنْ مَسْرُوقِ بْنُ أَجْدَعْ Masruq ibn Ajda' said something also similar. He said, أَمَا إِنِّي لَا أَعْنِي أَمِيرًا خَيْرًا مِنْ أَمِيرًا I don't mean that a leader is better than a leader. وَلَا عَامًا خَيْرًا مِنْ عَامٍ And I don't mean that a, a period is better than another period. Of course, that which the textual evidence said is best, is best, no doubt. He means after that. I'm not saying that. وَلَكِنْ But the problem is, the destruction comes what? وَلَكِنْ عُلَمَاءُكُمْ وَفُقَهَاءُكُمْ يَدْهَبُونَ but the reality of the matter is that your scholars are going. Wafuqaha and your jurists, the real fuqaha, are going. What we have right now are qurra reciters, people who read. When I say reciters, they just read from letters like notes from me. The fuqaha are going, the people who have true fiqh and understanding. And the ulama are going. Yadhabun, thubba la tajiduna minhum khalafan, and you don't have anyone to take their place. Ah. Uh, why don't we have people taking their place? One of the reasons why we won't have people taking their place is because people are not taking them serious and studying and taking knowledge from them. And they're not going and referring back to them. The person le learns three, four masail, he throws the table at, on, his, on his own sheikh and his own teachers. Yeah? What did the poet said? Insanu faadim, abada, wa qul if a person benefits you a benefit, إذا أفادك إنسان بفائدة فأدم من الب من العروب فأدم شكره أبدا. If a person benefits you some knowledge and gives you understanding, be consistent in gratitude towards him. وقول and say فلان so and so taught me this. جزاه الله الصالحة بما الله يقوله بجود. And what did he also say? وَأَلْقِ الْكِبْرَ وَالْحَسَدَ And also toss away and get rid of arrogance and the envy and the jealousy that you have in you. Give your scholar his respect. The poet, he said, أُعَلِّمُهُ الْرِمَايَةَ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ Every day I teach him how to, how to, uh, how to uh, uh, throw an arrow. Okay? I teach him it. فَلَمَّا اشْتَدَّ سَاعِدُهُ When his arm became strong and he learned how to do the arrow and he learned everything. Rabani, he turned it at me and he, and he, and he shot me. أُعَلِّمُهُ نَظْمَ القوافي. I teach him how to write poetry and how to put down the, the sequence and the symbols and how the rhyme and the poetry is written. And when he learnt it, what did he do? Jafani, he, he wrote the poetry against me. Some people are like that. You teach them, you educate them, they benefit from you. And days later, they are what? They are your contemporary. And it's shocking because the tawadu of the ulama before was that if one person taught them something, they would say that this is my sheikh. Even if they are what? Not, they didn't benefit much from them. Just one hadith. When he said, Man harfan, Anyone who taught me one letter, sirtu lahu abdin, I become a slave for him. I become a what? Slave. I'll serve him. I'm his slave. What do you want me to do? Get, carry your shoes for you? I'll carry it for you. Harfan. But Hirman happens to you because of that. You get prevented from really learning. When you really start throwing your mouth at the person who taught you, who educated you, who benefited you. So that's why when the scholars that are dying and they're passing away and they are going, we don't find anyone be able to take their place. We don't. And then he goes on to say, And so then this again, this vacuum, this space, starts to become apparent, and starts to become uh, available. So what happens? A group of people start giving verdicts with their own opinions. They benefit from it. Or they realize, oh, okay, scholars are going. No one's taking their place. Okay, I'll take it. Either he pushes himself forward and he takes the place of the scholars. And he gives what? He gives verdict with his own opinions. I, I, all day you hear, I, I, no qala Allah, no qala Rasul, I, I, I. Or he doesn't push himself forward there. 
Others go and push him forward. And they say, oh, this is a scholar. Oh, yeah, no, no, he said that yeah, five times, right? Yeah, okay, go. They push him forward. And they say, he's a scholar. That's what happens when that space is made available. But if the people respect the ulama and say, there are other ulamas. We are only connecting you guys to those ulama. We are bringing those ulama's works to you guys. We're just that bridge between you and the ulama. So what the student of knowledge will do is when he benefits from you and he takes the benefit from you, he will then refer the matters that he, and he, and he increases more knowledge. What does he do? He'll go back to the ulama and he increases himself in more knowledge. But if you say to the person, I'm the alim, automatically what is he going to do? When he benefits from you and he becomes more knowledgeable than you, he, he's, he's, if you're a alim, he's a mufti now, he's, he's more greater than you. That's the problem. In another wording, Masruq ibn al-Ajda' said, They destroy Islam from its roots. By giving verdicts from their own opinions, they, are, they destroy Islam. All of this, half of them, the Hajjah brings in Fatul Bari. One day, Rabi'at al-Ra'i, Rabi'at ibn Abdul Rahman, he cried. And as we know, Rabi'at al-Ra'i is the Shaykh of who? Rabi'at ibn Abdul Rahman is who? The Shaykh of Ab Imam Malik, rahimahullah, Malik ibn Anas, and Imam Malik's own teacher. He died in year 130, 136 Hijriya. You can see how early he was. He cried. Baka buka and shadeed, and he cried a serious cry. فقيل له it was then said to him a مصيبة نزلت بك is there a big calamity that has befallen you فقال he said لا no ولكن استفتي اليوم ما لا علم عنده but rather fatwa was asked to an individual who has no knowledge وظهر في الإسلام أمر عظيم and today and today a great calamity has befallen onto Islam. A great matter has happened in, within Islam. He's crying because fatwa was asked to who? What a person who has no knowledge. These people, ya ikhwa, what were they? As the poet said, لا تعرضن بذكرنا مع ذكرهم ليس الصحيح إذا مشى كالمقعدي. These people, as مثلا أبو عمر بن العلا who said these lines of poetry, أبو عمر بن العلا مثلا was an imam in lugha, imam in qiraat, and an imam in hadith. Imam, an imam in these fields. And he's the one who's saying, لا تعرضن بذكرنا مع ذكرهم. Don't mention our names next to those people's names, those big ulama, the great. He's saying this because it's not befitting for the one who is what, the one that's nothing to be mentioned next to those who are worthy of being mentioning. So it's important, my beloved brothers and sisters, we understand the severity and the dangers of asking a person who has no knowledge. Rather, some of these people have, that people are saying they're ulama, and they're mashayikh in this country, they don't know that the basic, basic, basic knowledge of hadith. And these imaa imma, if you look at the shurut, look at the kitab, go to the kitab, Irshad al-Fuhul. تحقيق علم الأصول written by محمد بن علي الشوكاني رحمه الله when he speaks about شروط المجتهد and the conditions of an alim and a mufti and a person of fatwa read look at these books of usul and look at the conditions he stipulates and the points that he brings with its evidences one of it is that the person is able to do what he knows علم الحديث the صناعة الحديثية the hadith he knows it because remember you're given a fatwa and if you're going to give a fatwa, you need to know if this hadith that you're going to use as a delil. Because remember, Shaykh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah, what does he mention? That everybody who wants to use something as an evidence, what does he need? Nas musaddaq and bahth muhaqqaq. So you need to make sure that the delil that you use is authentic. 
And also you need to know the way to be stidlal and how to extract the ruling out of it. So you need to have good knowledge of ilmul hadith and you also need to have good knowledge of mustalah al-hadith, ilmul rijal, takhrid al-hadith and matters pertaining to that. And you need to also have good knowledge of usul al-fiqh, dalalat al-alfad, al-am, wal-khas, wal-mutlaq, wal-mubghayyad, wal-mujum, wal-mubayyan, when it happens, ta'arud, wal-tarjih, how to reconcile between the evidences and whatnot. If you can't, then don't trouble yourself by accumulating so many sins. And don't also misguide the general mass and bring them to what? Destruction. Don't do that. And Rabi'atum ibn Abdul Rahman, he took it a step further and he said, Wala ba'du man yufti. Some of these people were giving fatwa like that and are answering questions. Ha huna ahakku bisijni they are more deserving to be placed in prisons than what? Than these criminals that are put in prison. Some of these people were out there giving fatwas and answering questions. And I said here the fatwa they mean by istimbat al ahkam, by extracting. Ruling from the kitab and the sunnah. Are you with me? Thinking that they have the rights to go to the kitab, they have the rights to go to the sunnah directly and to extract the rulings out of it. Are you with me, brothers? As for the person transmitting the fatwa of the ulama, this is nothing that the scholars are speaking about. This is not what's being spoken about here. Stimbat al ahkami extracting the rulings from the Quran and the sunnah, this person who's speaking like that and is giving fatwas like that, he's more deserving to be imprisoned than all these criminals that are running outside. And wallahi, the thing you have to realize is that, and this is important, is that extremism, it comes from this. It comes from this. Which is that, if you say that you can give fatwa when you have ignorance with you, and you have fatwa which are shadda, then this gives the rights to the takfiri, to the young kid who doesn't know anything to go to Kitab and Sunnah and to say Qala Allah and Qala Rasul without having to reference it back to any ulama or anyone who said it he's just going to do that istimbatat al-hakam and you can't then say who are you to do that why? you preceded me in it you're my self in this wa ana ala al-athar I am upon your path what do you have? what's the problem you have with me? You use your aql and your intellects and your rationality because you have no knowledge to use dalil and istimbatat correctly. So what did you do? You used the what? Your rationality. Your rationality is not better than mine. My rationality brought me to the conclusion of bombing this place or killing innocent people like that. That's what my aql brought me. Your aql told you not to do it. That's you. Are you with me? The reason, the only thing to, to, to bring all of this to an end is what? Ya ikhwa al-ulama, the scholars... The ulama and the people of knowledge. What did they say regarding this? We have an ayah in front of us. What are the what did the ulama say? Ah, that's the way to get the matter solved. When I watch social media, when I look at news reports, sometimes they say, "Who is the speaker?" Sometimes they say this. People can just go take ayats in the Quran and use it as they wish. So who they say this? And wallah, it is walil asaf al Response are not given regarding this. They say to you, you took that understanding from it. Good. But what about this person who just took that understanding from it? From the get-go, it's all wrong. Why do you think I have to understand it? Who am I to understand the verse like that? And who gives him the right to go to the Quran and read it like that? This is our issue. Our issue is that you and I don't have rights. We need to understand Rahimallahum Ri'in, may Allah have mercy upon a slave, Arafa Qadra Nafsihi, that really knows himself. And the person's honor rely, it lies on what knowing, sticking to what you know. Your value lies in what you can perfect. Don't go into what you can't perfect. As Ibn Hajar said, The one who enters into a field of his, Anyone who enters into a field that isn't from his fields, he doesn't have knowledge of it. Atabil ajayb, he comes with amazement. Are you there? <coughs> so what's important is that the scholars are used as the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. Naam. 
And what you find is that these individuals who are today looked at the muftis of the UK are an alim, loves an alim. But they have enmity for them. They want to dismiss those ulama, get rid of them. Why do they want to do that? Again, to put themselves forward. To get rid of them means that they come forward. وَلِذَلِكَ أَبُوْ سْحَاقَ الشَّاطِبِيُّ وَنِيزْ كِتَابَ الْإِعْتِصَامِ He mentioned something. He said, وَقَالَ ابْنُ عُلَيَّةِ ابْنُ عُلَيَّةِ said, حَدَّثَنِ الْيَسَعَ يَسَعَ told me. يَسَعَ told him, he said, تَكَلَّمَ وَاصِلُ بْنَ عَطَاءِ يَوْمًا وَاصِلُ بْنَ عَطَاءِ spoke one day. فَقَالَ عَمْرُ بْنُ عُبَيْدٍ and he said, that عَمْرُ بْنُ عُبَيْدٍ said, أَلَا تَسْمَعُونَ مَا كَلَامُ حَسَنَ الْبَصْرِ this individual Amr ibn Ubaid and Wasim ibn Ata'a from the Mu'tazila, the heads of the Mu'tazila. Now you're going to see that this is a trait. This is a characteristic very well known amongst the innovators and the people of innovation. Which is to belittle the scholars and dismiss them and to push them to the side. Common trait. So yes, I said, I heard Wasim ibn Ata'a speaking and saying that Amr ibn Ubaid his friend said, "Ala tasma'una ma kalamu Hassan al-Basri." Can you not hear the statements that comes out of the mouth of who? Al Imam Hassan al-Basri. He's talking about the great Imam, the great scholar. Wa ibn Sirin, and he's referring to Muhammad ibn Muhammad ibn Sirin. What the speeches that come out of their mouth, which is what? "Indama tasma'una illa khirqa tuhayid al-Mulqat." Their statement is nothing except a cloth that a woman uses for her menses, are you there? Which she's finished with it and she's just dismissed it. She's thrown it to the side. She doesn't want it anymore. Their knowledge and the statement that come out of their mouth is just like that. <coughs> Why is Wasil ibn Al-Ta and Amr ibn Ubaid pushing this propaganda? Why are they pushing this? The reason is they're trying to push aside Hassan al-Basri and Muhammad ibn Sirin and the likes of them is what? Is because there are thought in their necks. And they want to open the place for themselves. They want that space to be available. So they discredit these ulama, they put them down, they make them look you know, evil in the eyes of the people. And so what does that do? It gives them a platform to speak. Because they say there's no scholars, we need to talk. And bimururi zaman, they, make, they portray themselves as ulama. They portray themselves as what? As the scholars. And that is waqi'un al that, That's the waqi' that we're looking at today in the eyes and that we're seeing. Sahih? A little in the ulama. A whole lecture was done, how the mistakes of the ulama and that they didn't know coffee was halal or haram and then everything was made and when it was finished, the khulasat al qawl is I'm the alim, I'm the mufti of, of America. Just come to me and dismiss all of the ulama in the West. This is the zubta. This is the overall message. Today they come with a pink tie and tomorrow they're going to say the same speech to you in a different way with a red tie. Nothing changes. The message and the overall goal is one thing. It's sugar-coated and it's made to look presentable and acceptable to you. ikhwa. We need to know is this is a shanshana to na'rifuha. This is a speech that we know from before. Ah. You're not coming with anything new. Walidhalika he goes on to say in Abu Shaq al-Shatabi it was narrated that one of the leaders of the leaders of the innovators one day كان يريد, he wanted to give تفضيل الكلام على الفقه he wanted to give virtue to علم الكلام over علم الفقه علم الكلام is a discredited disparaged you know belittled science that the sharia that the religion discredits over what? علم الفقه which is the reality of this religion which the prophet said من يريد الله بخير يفقه في الدين he wants to make علم الكلام which was taken from the 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 the, the, the Greeks and their philosophy and their علم الكلام he wants to make that better than the فقه which the prophet praised من يريد الله بخير يفقه في الدين anyone who Allah wants good for him he gives him the understanding of the religion look how Shaytan beautifies something to you so he wants to give virtue to علم الكلام so how can he do that? He can't do it whilst there's ulama life. He can't exercise his extremism, his exaggeration, of praising ilm al-kalam. So what did he say? 
فكاري يقول so this is what he kept saying شاطبي look how he understood that this was his ultimate goal this is all he wanted to do كان يريد تفضيل علم الكلام he wanted to give precedence to علم الكلام over what الفقه so he said فكاري يقول so he used to say إن علم الشافعي الإمام الشافعي's knowledge وأبي حنيفة الإمام أبي حنيفة العبان بن بشير the great Imam, and Imam al-Shafi'i, the great Imam, Jumlatu, their knowledge in totality, it doesn't go out of la yakhruju min sarawil, min sarawil al-mar'ah. It doesn't leave the bottom garment of the woman, her lower garment. In, in other words, all they speak about is menses, postnatal bleeding, uh, and that's it. That's their knowledge. Uh, they don't know politics, methalan. The scholars, they don't know our, our waqi'i. The scholars don't have gay neighbors, as one said. Like we have gay neighbors, like Kaanna, which is a condition in Indi Nafsihi. That if a scholar doesn't have a gay neighbor, he can't give fatwa about the West. Ajib, right? So, this is what my beloved brothers and sisters, we know it, and it was documented, these kind of statements that they're uttering, it's documented for us in the what? Fi kutubi ahli ilm, in the books of the people of knowledge. So that is what brings about my beloved brothers and sisters. The second one was what? Dihabul ulama'i. The scholars are dying out and they're going. Wa'tar'isul jahala. And the ignorant ones are placed in their place. That brings about extremism. Pay attention to that. And it brings extremism in exaggeration. And it brings about extremism in what? Negligence.